Hello, welcome. So in this video I'd like to show you how to build a uh, village interior environment. Uh, I'm gonna be using a pack called Village Interiors Kit by uh, 3D Forge. And um, now before we start, I'm gonna, I would just like to go through a few things. First of all, I made the grid a little bit more transparent because sometimes it's gonna sit on, uh, on top of, of a bunch of floor objects and it kind of gets in the way. So I, I went to edit, uh, preferences, grid and I set the wire color field, I set the alpha value to 109. Right now the next thing we need to do is we need to establish a grid cell size. Uh, we have to go to tools, gspawn, windows, grid settings and these models that I'm working with work really well with a grid cell size of 0.5. So I set 0.5 here um, and yeah now we're ready to, to actually start uh, building the level. So. I have already have the prefab set up here. Uh, I'm gonna type in the search field, I'm gonna type floors. And notice that we have these nice, this nice selection of uh, floor objects here. I'm gonna use this one for the basement. And I'm gonna activate the box object spawn tool. I'm gonna double click on the floor object and I'm gonna start from the origin and I'm gonna lay down a simple uh, floor plan, something like this. And then I'm also gonna go in this direction a little bit maybe something like this yeah and add like two more rows here okay now notice that we have now nah, it's actually a little bit too big so uh, let's actually switch to selection mode and delete some of these uh, some of these objects I, I think okay I think this this looks uh, this looks nice okay now uh, notice that these objects have been added at, at the root of the scene uh, which can get pretty disorganized. So let's go ahead and use object groups to organize our scene. I'm gonna go to tools, gspawn, windows, object groups. I'm gonna create an object group called OG floors. And inside the prefab manager, I'm gonna press Ctrl A to select all the prefabs and then drag and drop the OG floors object group on top of those prefabs. And then uh, click on this, on this button right here, which says apply object group links for selected prefabs, yeah? So the, what this does is the objects that already exist in the scene uh, will be attached to the group that we created. And from now on, um, any object, when we, when we spawn any one of those objects, they will automatically be attached to this object group. Now let's also create a, an object group for the walls, OG walls. And I'm gonna type walls. And I know I'm gonna be using, I'm gonna be using this walls uh, library the world 02 library and the world 04 library so i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna press i'm gonna in the prefab manager i'm gonna press ctrl a to select all the prefabs and then drag and drop the og walls object group okay and finally what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say i'm gonna create another object group called og default i'm gonna press the plus icon to create it and then i'm gonna click on the uh, icon to the left of it and notice that it turned uh, this in this. It has this orange uh, color now. What it what this means is basically this object group is the default object group, and the default object group is basically used for all the prefabs that don't that don't have a uh, an object group associated with them. Yeah. So when a, when a prefab doesn't have an object group, if you spawn it in the scene, it will be attached to the uh, to this OG default group. Uh, okay. So let's uh, let's move on. Uh, if you if you've watched the um, intro uh, tutorials, uh, the one uh, the intro video uh, where I talk about uh, getting started with modular environments, you probably already know how we're gonna lay down the walls. We're gonna use this uh, modular wall uh, spawn feature, uh, spawn tool, and this requires us to create a wall example prefab. Now, this is important because we're gonna use walls, like if all we had to do was to surround this area with walls, it probably wouldn't be worth it to uh, to use this plugin, it wouldn't be worth it to go through the trouble of creating an example prefab just to, to just to surround this small area. But um, usually, the levels that you're going to be building are going to be, uh, you know, um, some of them are going to be quite large. And even in this particular case, uh, we need walls not only for the basement, but we also need walls in order in order to, you know, build the rooms and and so on. So let's definitely go ahead and create this uh, example prefab that is going to tell the plugin how the wall pieces. Uh, connect to each other. I'm gonna be using, so we're gonna start with the basement prefab. Um, and the nice thing about it is that when we, if we build the example prefab for the basement wall, uh, we can actually reuse the same example prefab when building the rooms. Yeah. 
So I'm gonna switch to selection mode. I'm gonna drag and drop this uh, straight wall prefab right here in the in the scene. Uh, notice that when I release the left mouse button, it automatically um, starts snapping the object to the grid. I can left click to commit. I'm gonna drag and drop the uh, inner corner prefab. I'm gonna press Y to rotate it and left click to commit. Let's search for the outer corner. This is it, this is the outer corner, drag and drop. Y to rotate, snap, left click, commit. Okay, now we're gonna take the middle prefab, the middle uh, straight wall piece, Control D to duplicate, Y to rotate, press D to activate modular snapping, snap into place, there you go. Then again, Control D, D, commit. Okay, so now we have the example prefab. Uh, the uh, let's let's actually we actually we have the we have the objects now we need to create the example prefab. Select all these objects here and inside the prefab library manager click on the create prefab button. Uh, you have to give the prefab a name. In this particular case, I already gave you the name. It's called basement wall example and uh, it's gonna go inside the wall example prefabs folder uh, and just click on uh, just click on create. Uh, it's gonna inform me that I already have a prefab with the same name because I've already created it in a, like in a previous run. Uh, so let's go ahead and click yes to overwrite it. And now I'm gonna select the prefab that was created and I'm gonna click on the open button in order to open up the prefab. And the last thing we need to do is we need to give these objects, these wall objects, we, we need to give them a name that the plugin can recognize. So um, this one is gonna be called first straight. This is a uh, middle straight. This one's last straight. This is uh, outer corner. And this is inner corner. All right. So the example prefab is, is complete. Uh, now what we need to do is we need to create a prefab, a wall prefab profile. Go to walls, gspawn, windows, uh, modular wall prefabs. And uh, drag and drop the, uh, actually let's let's go ahead. I'm not gonna use the default one. We could use the default uh, profile, but let's, let's go ahead and create a new one. I'm gonna call it uh, basement walls. And I'm gonna drag and drop the basement wall example prefab right here in this field. And now we need to actually specify the prefabs that we're gonna be using. So the outer corner is gonna be this guy right here. Let's drag and drop it right here in this slot. Uh, the inner corner is gonna be this one. Drag and drop it right here. And then we have the straight wall prefab, which is this one right here. Okay, so now uh, we, can, uh, we can actually delete these uh, guys from the scene. We no longer uh, need them. I'm gonna switch to object spawn and activate the modular walls uh, spawn tool and then uh, click uh, and then select the modular wall prefab profile which is the basement walls profile we created earlier and now let's uh, let's actually spawn these walls now if you ever get this uh, this weird behavior just press escape to escape and uh, press the refresh button right here sometimes the data needs to be refreshed okay so now we will it will work correctly Shift left click to commit. Okay, so we have a uh, simple um, basement uh, environment here. Now it's time to actually populate this with uh, different types of objects. So first of all, what we're gonna need is we need, we're gonna need a bunch of stairs that will gonna, that are gonna lead to the upper level. Uh, I'm gonna switch to modular uh, modular snapping, and here I'm gonna search for in the prefab library manager. I'm gonna search for stairs, and I know I'm gonna be using. I have a prefab here that I like to use. This one, it's this one right here. So double click on it, and let's see. Uh, Yeah, I think this is the this is the correct position for it. Okay, now uh, also let's actually start populating the interior uh, of this basement with a bunch of props. Uh, first, the first thing I want to do is I want to place a bunch of wooden windows on those uh, on those walls right here. And uh, so let's go ahead and search for wood, wind wood. Okay, this is these are the prefabs that we're interested in. We have a nice variation of them right here. I'm um, just going to use these ones. And in order to place these prefabs, uh, there's actually multiple ways of doing this. I'm going to show you one of the slow ways and then, then I'm going to talk about the, the faster way. So just switch to make sure you have modular snap enabled. Double click on this wall, rotate it, and then uh, place it near one of these, like use grid snapping to place it on top of this, 
like near the wall okay now if we take a look at this notice that there is a gap between the window and the wall uh, that's because we're using grid snapping and when it snaps this is how it snaps right now we could switch to selection mode select the wall select the window press shift f and then left click on one of the on one of the walls to push the to project the window on the wall plane and then we what we could do is we can, we can press ctrl d and use the move gizmo to snap this into uh, into place and and so on. Yeah, so this is the slow way of doing it. It's not entirely slow, but I mean it, it will work sometimes. But uh, there's in this particular case there's a faster way to do this. So starting with version uh, 3.2.0, Gspawn has this feature called uh, decoration rules or deco rules, and what it does is it allows you to use. Uh, it allows you to use an example scene that the plugin can parse and it can detect the way in which objects decorate each other. Now, luckily, uh, we have uh, an example scene here. I mean, there's, there's a whole bunch of example scenes, but for the prefabs that we're interested in, we have uh, an example scene called multi-level house. So let's go ahead and switch uh, to that scene. And if we take a look here, it's basically... I don't know what I did here. Oh, okay, I switched, yeah. Uh, okay, so if we take a look here, it's basically the kind of what we're trying to achieve. It's a, we, it has a basement and it has you know an upper level. So uh, if we look in the basement here, notice that it, the uh, the windows decorate the walls, and this is exactly what we're interested in. We we want to know how these windows uh, decorate the walls, and uh, make sure you have the G spawn object initialized. Yeah, I already have it right here, but if you you probably if you're loading this scene up for the first time, you won't have it. So make sure you go to Tools G spawn initialize. Um, and what we need to do is we need to press this generate deco rules button and what this will do is it, the plugin will detect how this how this window objects um, are supposed to decorate the walls and then we can use this information to quickly place our windows on our own base in our own basement okay so it's done let's uh, let's switch back to our own scene the one that uh, we're working on um, and I'm gonna press Alt R to select the uh, prefab uh, to select the uh, plugin object. I'm gonna switch to object spawn, and I'm gonna activate. We need to activate the props spawn tool. Yeah, so decoration rules work with prop spawn, and then we need to uh, check this apply decor rules button right here. And now notice what happens if I uh, use this. If I place this uh, window prefab on one of the walls, it will automatically snap where it's supposed to where it's supposed to sit. Right. Okay. Now I'm gonna use. Uh, I don't want to use these small uh, prefabs, I want to use uh, something larger, let's say uh, this guy right here, yeah, there you go, uh, this is a, yeah, this is a wall corner and corners are tricky, so let's place one right here, okay. And uh, maybe use a bunch of different ones uh, over on this side. Okay, I think that's uh, yeah, I think that's enough. Uh, if you wanted to, you can just replace some of these. So, for example, like we could switch to selection mode, select two of these guys, and uh, maybe if you want to use the smaller models, you can hold down the Alt key and left click to replace them. Yeah, and now this it uses the smaller ones. Yeah, so you can add a uh, variation like this here. Let's also do the same with these guys. Okay, I, I think that's uh, I think that's enough. We're not going to have any uh, windows on this side. I don't think that will look pretty pretty good. So let's uh, let's move on. Let's add a few more stuff in here in this uh, in this basement. Uh, we have some small walls that I would like to low walls that I would like to use. Gonna switch to modular snapping. Double click. Uh, I think. Go right over there. Okay. Maybe go over in this direction. I don't know. I guess something like this. Okay. Now let's add some uh, some carpets. Uh, we have a library called Woven. And I'm going to use uh, props spawn. I'm going to deactivate deco rules in this case. I'm going to double click 
Okay, and now notice that because these carpets are really thin, they kind of, you know, they overlap with the floor object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this implicit offset field here. I'm going to set it to 0. Point, let's say 0. 0.5. And now it looks much better, but I'm going to use a larger one. Is there a larger one? Okay, there you go. Just I'm going to hold down the shift key and move the mouse to rotate it slightly. Yeah. Uh, There you go, and I'm gonna use this larger one to place it right over here, and maybe. Ah, oh, there's oh, okay, that's that's what I want. I'm gonna switch to selection mode, and try to select this one. Ah, it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be difficult because it's really thin and it actually selects the floor. So let's see. I'm gonna how do I select that? I'm gonna select this prefab in a prefab manager. And click on the select prefabs in scene. Okay, there you go. Okay, now I don't want to select that one. Actually, let's go ahead and press delete. And I'm gonna switch to spawn mode again. Ah, but right, it's actually this one. It's it's actually oh no, there you go. It works. I'm gonna rotate it slightly, and then press Y to rotate it again. Shift to move the mouse to rotate. Okay, so I think that that looks. Uh, that looks, that, looks, that looks right. Okay, now let's uh, place a bunch of props like uh, crates, and uh, we have a bunch of sacks here. Now uh, I'm gonna go to sacks, uh, and let's see. I think we can uh, place now with sacks. I think what what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the uh, physics spawn tool to kind of scatter them around the scene. So let's go ahead and go to Tools, G Spawn Windows, and uh, create a random prefab profile uh, called Sex. Uh, click on Create. Well, hopefully it's not going to take forever or anything because it shouldn't. It's just a simple. Okay, there you go. So uh, let's add a bunch of these. Uh, here okay now I'm gonna go to uh, physics spawn and I'm gonna select the random prefab profile that we just created and I can just uh, I'm gonna hold on control and use the scroll wheel to decrease the radius a little bit yeah and uh, okay just have them line down Okay, there you go. Now you might want to go through uh, some of these and make sure that they see. For example, uh, if you look at this uh, this prefab right here, this doesn't really look very realistic, yeah. So sometimes you might need to make a few changes to this uh, to this prefab. Like this one is standing straight up. It's not. That's not realistic. This one. This one too. Okay, so. Okay, we deleted some of these, uh, some of these guys, and now uh, let's place some uh, crates. Hold down control and move the mouse to scale. So something like this. We could we could go on. Like we could uh, decorate this with uh, many different objects. But I think you I think you get the idea. So you can uh, use the prop spawn to uh, prop spawn tool to place these to scatter these objects around. Uh, 
Okay, now let's go ahead and add a ceiling to this basement. So the basement, the, the basement doesn't have a ceiling object. Uh, sorry, uh, like a ceiling. Um, I'm, I keep mixing words up. I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, the way to do that, it's, it's actually pretty simple. So we're gonna switch to selection mode. Uh, I'm gonna hold down the G key and then double click on on the on the upper side of the wall objects. What this will do is it will it will place the grid on top of the on top of the walls. Okay, now I'm gonna select one of the floor prefabs. I'm gonna press Shift A. Yeah, and I'm gonna press Ctrl D to duplicate them, and then Shift G to project them on top of the on top of the grid. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press uh, Z or X to rotate them, and there you go. We have we have a scene. Now, of course, you might want to use a different prefab from the, for the ceiling. So you're currently we're using the same prefab for the floor and the ceiling. Uh, if you want to replace it, you can go to floors uh, and maybe use this one instead right here. So I'm going to hold down Alt and left click to change the prefab. And there you go. Okay, so now let's uh, actually move to the upper side. Um, and start building the start start building the rooms. Uh, so I'm gonna go to no, actually I'm already inside the inside the floors uh, library, and I'm, I think I'm gonna use a wooden floor uh, prefab. I'm gonna switch to box spawn. I'm gonna activate the uh, wooden floor prefab, and uh, let's see how we're gonna do this. Uh, Something like this, you know, maybe. Okay, and then we're gonna have. Okay, so I, I guess something like this will uh, something like this will do. Uh, maybe just add another row here. Okay, now we also need so we uh, we want to place uh, walls around these. Um, Around these floors, so we can we can use the example prefab that we uh, used for the basement, but we need to create a new prefab profile. So let's go ahead and new uh, create a new uh, wall prefab profile. I'm gonna call this room walls. Uh, I'm gonna search for walls in the prefab library manager and zero four. Okay, these these are the walls that I would like to use. I'm gonna. Uh, first, I'm gonna go to wall example prefabs folder and drag and drop the basement wall example right here. So these walls that we're using in the the, the walls that exist inside the asset pack have been designed in such a way that they actually they like they have different there are different styles of walls in the sense that they look different, but they all snap together in the same way. Yeah. So we can reuse the example prefab that we built before, and now we just need to specify the um, we need to connect the wall prefabs to the right slots here okay so now we have let's press refresh and now we have the uh, room walls all set up I'm gonna select room walls here and there you go let's let's I'm gonna uncheck this erase existing button and I'm gonna come back to it later F shift to place okay so now we have the room walls. We need to make a few adjustments here. So I'm gonna delete this this guy right here. Uh, I'm gonna duplicate this guy. Y to rotate, D to activate snapping, and put it right over here. Okay. And now what we need to do is we we want to use one of the uh, wall, one of the basement uh, prefabs to kind of go in this direction. To like to, to, to put a cap on on this you know on this area right here. So I'm press Control D, D, press R to reset the snap offset, the vertical snap offset, and snap it right over here. Then press Control D again, Y to rotate it. And now what we want to do is we want to use one of these. Uh, uh, I think it's this one right here. This wall cap. Okay, there you go. So this is what we this is what we want. And also, what we need to do is we need to delete this wall 
this uh, ceiling, these two ceiling prefabs. You have to make room for, you know, the player to just come in here. Okay. Now, if we take a look at our surroundings, we no notice that there is a gap between uh, there is a gap between the wall and uh, the ceiling. So we need to cover this. Uh, we need to cover this gap. Uh, we have a bunch of well, we have this wall top prefab right here, and this is what we're gonna use to um, to cover that to cover that area. So I'm gonna go to modular snapping, double click on this guy. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So this uh, I had rotated it previously in a previous recording. This is how the prefab looks in its uh, default rotation. It's supposed to sit on top of walls. But it also works. Uh, it, it can also be used to place to place them below. Uh, it's it's so it's called the wall top. But you can also place it below walls to cover these uh, to cover these gaps. So I'm gonna press. Uh, no, I'm gonna press X to rotate it, and then I think I can just snap it into place right here. But I'm gonna move the grip upwards. I'm gonna move the grid right here at the top because of the way the, the pivot is set up. And now left click. Yeah, so this one is a little bit more uh, tricky. Okay, there you go. So we have the wall top set up. No, we no longer have a gap there, but there is still a gap showing. Uh, is there a gap? Yeah, there's a gap showing here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this wall top right here, press Ctrl D to duplicate it, hold down Ctrl and use the, move gizmo, use the move gizmo to move it around and then press Alt and left click on this uh, wall top prefab right here, this, this one right here, okay, and press Y to rotate it a couple of times and then there you go, okay, now this, so yeah, uh, the idea is that it you have to get used to the models that um, are associated with the pack that you're using. Um, I did a few, so um, I kind of you know played around with it before I started recording, and I, I know how these uh, pieces uh, are supposed to stick together to you know to connect to each other. Um, but yeah, understanding how to use the asset, the the models that you're working with is, is very is actually very important, and the demo scenes can can help a lot uh, can help a lot with this. Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is, I want to place a bunch of, I want to create a bunch of rooms. Yeah, so um, we could say like this is the hallway and uh, like a large hallway, like a actually like a library of sorts, and then uh, this is a hallway that leads into let's say uh, hmm, we could have like a bedroom on the left side, and this could be like a kitchen or something. Now, uh, honestly, this may not be the most interesting design in the world, I admit, but uh, let's let's just go ahead and do it. So, first of all, I want to separate the um, uh, kitchen from the from the bedroom. I'm gonna switch to modular worlds, modular worlds. I'm gonna hold down G to make sure the grid sits on the uh, on the floor, and I'm gonna press R to reset vertical snap. Press Y to rotate. Uh, and let's see what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do it like this. I'm gonna make sure we have erase erase existing uh, checked. That will make sure that when uh, the, when the wall when the old wall pieces overlap the new ones that we're gonna spawn, uh, they will be erased and replaced by the new by the new ones. Okay, so let's uh, something like this. There you go. Okay, it created a gap there. That's that's actually normal. There you go. Let's uh, do the same on uh, on this side. Okay, great. Now uh, we need to create uh, entrances, so I'm gonna switch to selection mode. Select two of these uh, prefabs. Actually, all four of them. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to wall 04 and search for this prefab right here. I'm gonna press, I'm gonna hold down Alt and left click, and that will create an entrance. Okay, now let's start populating. Uh, we're not gonna focus too much on populating this uh, environment with objects with props because uh, actually that's uh, that's pretty simple to do. Uh, so let's. Um, 
Okay, uh, book stands. We have book stands. Oh, not here. Uh, books, book piles, books, bookshelves. Okay, bookshelves. Let's let's place a bunch of bookshelves. I'm gonna use modular snapping to place those uh, bookshelves. Um, do we have a larger one? Okay, no, I don't think we do. That's actually too high. Okay, now uh, I'm gonna switch to selection mode. Press Shift A to select uh, and Control A to select all of these. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna I, what I what I want to do is I wanna sorry about this. Let me just erase. Let me just undo because I kind of mix things up there. Uh, let's press Shift A to select all of these guys, and then uh, mm, okay, duplicate them. Press D to enable modular snapping. Press Y to rotate. No, this is actually not what not what I want to do. Yeah, let's let's just ignore these uh, these last steps. Uh, we can just uh, place them normally. I wanted to use uh, re prefab replacement, but uh, I'm not gonna do that. It's not worth it in this case. Maybe or maybe it is. So I've selected all these prefabs, and now I'm gonna select a bunch of prefabs in the prefab manager, and I'm gonna hold down Control Alt and left click to randomize these existing prefabs in the scene. This is what I wanted to do. Okay, great. Um, can place a bed inside the bedroom. Let's see which one. Uh, I guess we're gonna place one here and another one uh, over here. I'm gonna use activate the uh, prop spawn and I'm gonna activate deco rules and I'm gonna place some uh, some windows okay there you go can uh, place two of them here switch to selection mode select this guy press control uh, press uh, Y to rotate and uh, Snap it right here. Okay. Uh, let's uh, place some carpets. Woven. Uh, some more interesting ones we have. Uh, we have here, I think. Or like I'm looking for something uh, fancy, like something that would be in a bedroom. I think this one uh, can uh, actually sit in a bedroom. Uh, make it a little bit uh, bigger. This can, uh, I don't know. Okay, yeah. So yeah, I think you get the idea. Now this could be the kitchen, and we could we have a whole bunch of uh, stuff that goes that would go inside the kitchen here. We're not gonna do that right now. The last thing that I would like to show you is um, something that we did earlier with the uh, uh, with the basement. Uh, basically, we want to create a ceiling for the rooms. Yeah, because they have no ceiling. So let's go ahead and. Uh, just uh, pre so let's let's use a different strategy this time around. Uh, previously, what we did is we press Shift A to select all the prefabs, then press Control D and duplicate. Uh, so this this approach is going to be uh, somewhat similar, but it will differ in the way in which we will select those um, floor prefabs. So I'm going to go to this. So I'm in selection mode, you have to, if you click on this diamond button right here, notice you have this selection grow button. Um, the so what this does, if I press the space key, it will grow the selection. Now notice that in this case, what it did is, it basically, because this floor ultimately indirectly connects to all the other objects in the environment, uh, it will it had pretty much selected everything. Now this is not what I want. What I want is I want to select the floors only. So I can just select the floor object and then check the prefab constraint button and then hit space and that will select only the uh, floor objects. Okay, and now I can uh, I can um, hold down the G key, uh, double click on uh, the upper side of the walls of the room walls, press Control D to duplicate, Shift G to pro project on top of the uh, uh, on top of the on top of the grid, uh, on top of the walls, and now press X or Z, which which one you prefer to uh, rotate, and of course we're gonna use a different uh, prefab. Uh, 
prefab we're gonna use what prefab we're gonna use in this case uh, well I don't know like I suppose we could use uh, this one right here yeah we could use this one I, I don't really like that one this no the, okay this one I think this one looks uh, really really nice and also we have to cap this area right here so let's uh, let's go ahead and I'm just gonna select one of these guys uh, press U to activate the extrude gizmo and just drag this. Uh, okay, we need to make sure that we don't have. We you need to uncheck avoid overlaps because currently it's overlapping with the with the walls and it's not spawning anything. Okay, there you go. So now we also have a yeah. So we have a ceiling there. We have ceilings here in the basement. Uh, we could be placing lamps and yeah. Uh, we we could go on and place a whole bunch of these. Uh, these guys um, okay so I think yeah well currently so what's wrong with this environment is that it's actually missing an entrance like there's no way to, like basically there's no door so let's go ahead and uh, finish this off it kind of feels incomplete right now so let's pretend that the entrance is gonna be right here um, I'm gonna go to wall walls wall zero four like there's no way to enter inside for like we're coming from outside there's no way to do this yeah so it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit weird so I'm gonna replace it with this prefab and I'm gonna search for a bunch of doors 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 okay uh, I think this one is looking pretty nicely let's see if we can actually oh, okay we have the grid sitting at the top uh, press G and left click on the floor objects okay now luckily we're using so we're using decor rules and it can it knows how to snap this this door in the like in the right place okay left click okay so this could this could be the entrance from uh, coming from the outside all right so uh, yeah that that's pretty much it I know this is uh, probably not the greatest design in the world but basically I wanted to walk you through the uh, process of, of building um, you know a simple interior environment to just show you uh, the kind of you know kind of the th key things that uh, you need to uh, you need to be aware of and uh, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you very much for watching bye bye